I love farming. My background is farming. I grew up growing cotton and millet and rice. When I came here ten, over 10 years ago, we have only two Korean people in Minnesota. Now we have uh, 8,000 Korean people in Minnesota. All of you contribute so much for this country so far. And now we are going back to farm for Minnesota, for this country. Welcome everybody and thank you for coming today. This session, like she said, is about chemical safety and food safety on the farm. My name is Annalisa Hulford and I work at the University of Minnesota. I also work with Michelle Sherman, who's in the back, trying to hide in the green, and uh, many of you may know her as well, and Polly. Um, we have had the honor of working for the last several years with this group of farmers and other farmers, Hmong farmers, talking about food safety on your farm. So what we talk about is protecting yourself and your plants and your family from chemicals, and from any kind of germs and microbes that might be on the plants that could make you sick. So we've had a real pleasure working with these farmers. They're very um, passionate and interesting, as you will hear today. Um, there are three times during this session where we will ask you questions, and I will read them slowly, and then just be honest and raise your hand if, that, if, if it is correct for you. No one will tell anybody, it's just so we can uh, understand you more and make, uh, make this education as good as we can for you. So with that, we will get started and um, I will give just a very brief overview about food safety. So food safety is all about making the plants that you grow for your customers as safe and healthy as possible. And so why, why do we even care about this? It, you know, so making money is very important and being happy is very important, but being healthy is also very, very important. So there's three main reasons why. First is the people that are eating your food are people. And if they were to get sick from something on your food, that, that wouldn't be good up here. So we love our customers and we want to protect them. Second is your family members, your children, yourself, um, when you're using chemicals, you want to be as safe as possible because even though they can be helpful on the farm, they also can be dangerous if not used correctly. The third is your plants. Your plants are what um, are why you're there. They're why you're at your farm. So we want our plants to be healthy and we, this includes our soil. We want our soil to be healthy because if they aren't healthy, then um, our business isn't healthy. And then the fourth would just be your business. So your income, uh, you know, comes from your plants. And so making your farm as profitable as possible is all, all about being as safe as possible too. So I really encourage you to take the information that you learned today and bring it back to your farm. And second, tell your customers about what you're doing. So if it's someone at a farmer's market, say, I use food safety on my farm. You might even have something on your uh, stall that says that you have learned about food safety. And many of your customers will thank you um, and, and be very, very interested. Or if you sell at a restaurant or a school, you could also say that. I work with many of these schools and they're very interested in hearing about this. So it's a very important part of your business. So um, we, I want to mention that we have a hand washing, food safety is a lot about hand washing. Michelle likes to talk about hand washing a lot. Um, we have a hand washing station out by our, our booth outside. Um, so we're not going to talk about that too much today. Go out and, and visit that if you like. Today we are mostly going to be talking about measuring, using proper measuring things when you're using chemicals on your farm. Second, the fact that there are labels on a chemical bottle and that's very, very important to look at them. Third is protective equipment that you wear when you're using chemicals. I just wanted to make a note that we really are always talking about water as well and making sure that the water on your farm 
is as clean as possible. Water is a very, very integral, a very important part of our farm, and making sure that that water is as clean as possible is uh, one of the biggest things you can do on your farm. So, first question. So I will read it, and then it will be translated, and then you will raise your hand when the answer that is correct for you is read. ทัศนะเดชีอ่ากูยตปะเซลูโดจอมมองอ่ากูรู้ทีมอ่านี่เนาะอ่าถ่าลูเนาะนี่ชื่อว่าเลยเจอ่ากูจิตอมมองอ่
before we have done that. <laughs> or have you ever asked a family or a friend to do it, someone else to do it? In the beginning, when we first started uh, using these in farming, then yes, uh, we didn't use equipment and we really just went from measuring from eye, like to see how things are how you're supposed to do it and no measuring or anything. Good. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Well, we're just saying the truth. Yep. How it is. So, now Chung will talk about measuring. Um, I have already said some things about why it's important. He will talk a little bit more and then we will do a demonstration. เอ่อตัดชินอเจมอปอลอดอ่าปลอดตูตองเดนาเลมาลีฮอปปี้ถาดซอเลอ่าเนี่ยมอเนี่ยขอถาดนะนะเจ่เอ่อตูเยจี
So one, for one example, when you spray chemicals on your plants, you have to, after you, you spray it, you have to wait seven to 10 days before you can actually pick your plants. The correct way how to uh, use your chemicals on your plants is you can't already pre-mix your chemicals and, and the, the water at home or a couple of days uh, before. You have to do you have to mix it at the farm right then and use it right away. These are the measuring equipments that we use to measure the chemicals we're going to spray the plants with. This is a teaspoon. And this and this is a, a tablespoon, up here, a tablespoon, and uh, it, you have to be very careful. It's the medium-sized one, and if you don't, then you use too much, your your plants will die. And this is called a measuring cup. And this measuring cup, it is again very important that you know the exact amount of chemicals that you're going to be putting in that cup and measuring it to the amount of uh, water or gallon that you're going to be mixing the chemicals with. ตัวที่น้องนิวลามัวจะจะนัดชี้ชั่วที่ที่อาเดชีลามัวชั่วไอ้คนนี้ปอกนี่ปอกเกี่ยนะฮะเดี๋ยวเราเราชี้นะเจ
So like, I, so like I said before, when you're going to be measuring a chemical, it's very important that you, you use your measuring device and you put it on a very flat surface so then you get the most correct reading. And then once you pour your chemical into the measuring device, you, you can't look on top to see if that was the correct measurement and you can't go too low below. You have to be at eye level to make sure that the chemical is at the right measurement. And it's very important that when you are going to be mixing your chemicals, that you not only prepare all your equipment and measuring device in the in one area, uh, because if you make if you have your different chemical uh, your different equipments in different places, you're going to be measuring here, going over there to mix it. By the time you mix everything, you would have already uh, you would have already maybe spilled some, and it wouldn't be correct. So, so once you have all your measurements corrected and you've put it into the the uh, the right container where you're going to spray, what you do is you you have to put it into the container and you have to mix it very well. And there's different kinds of equipments you can use to spray. So this is just one. But once you do, you have to pump. You have to make sure it's very well mixed, and then you'll be ready. So once you've mixed your chemicals and everything is ready, you have to make sure that you are protecting yourself with the right equipment such as your gloves, your face mask, or even um, eye goggles, and then the kind of clothes you wear to protect yourself from the chemicals you'll be spraying. It is also very important to be to be aware of the weather for uh, for example wind for example when you are ready you have all your equipment you have your chemicals you have to see where the wind is blowing because when you when you spray you don't want the wind when you're spraying you don't want the wind to blow the chemicals back to you so when you spray you see where the wind is and you stay away from that and so it hits the plants and not yourself <laughs> And the, the, and the correct way how to spray your chemicals is you don't go forward spraying the chemical. You go backwards. So when you spray, you spray backwards. And not only that, you spray your, pan, your plants from the top and then um, at the roots also. So one, one more thing, um, when you see any, the plant, it should be wet, but not dripping off. Um, it is it is a uh, very nice that we're in this room and we're meeting each other and it's uh, it's nice to talk about what's happening. But in the in in actuality, when you're actually farming, what's great about it is you have you get to exercise and uh, it's a great way to be healthy.
And not only that, does it, uh, farming help you be healthy, but whatever you produce, you can keep in your pocket. And keep in mind, even though it is hot, uh, you have to bear with, with uh, farming. And that is when you need to be at your, your best and take care of your, your plants so then you can kill off the weeds and everything. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Ma and Chu. First, the question. If you have used chemicals on your farm, have you ever looked at the label or had someone else read that label to you? You see, one problem is for people who are older or people who have just come to the country or just started uh, uh, farming and don't know how to read, uh, it's very difficult for us, and we, we can't read the labels. And, and so it is still a struggle. It's still difficult because we can recognize some of the, some of the chemicals, but sometimes it's hard to, to know which chemical is what. We will be talking about that more. Hello, everyone. My name is Ma Li. I like to farm. I farm in Egan. I have been farming for the past five years, but um, I, I do apologize for those who have been farming a lot more than I have. I feel that just because I farm a little bit, I probably don't know as much as those that farm more. But, so I apologize for that, but um, I'm here to give my knowledge to you guys. And that is why I'm here today to give you guys my knowledge. And personally, um, my farming is not really for profit. My, my goal in farming is really for health, for exercising, and just enough for me to consume. So before, I was farming personally just for me and my family. But uh, after, but for the past two years, I decided, you know, it is a little bit lonely, and I would like to see people and faces. So I decided two years ago to to go fa to farm and sell my produce at the farmers market. Mm -hmm. 
So I think it is a, a really good uh, thing for especially us older people. So no matter if you farm a lot or a little bit, here in, here in this country, there's a lot of different kinds of insects that could prohibit your, your produce from growing. And not only that, but it's, a diff, it's different. The, the land is different. So you have to use chemicals to help with your, your farming. So there are some, there's different chemicals. There are some to kill the insects, some to help your produce grow. So to tell you more about the chemicals and the bottles, uh, just so you guys know, no matter if it's chemicals to kill insects or chemicals to help your, your produce grow, there will always be labels on the bottle of chemical. It's great if you can read, and that definitely helps. And it is very important if you can't read that you find somebody that knows how to read so they can help you. So then you can correctly use the chemical um, and safely. So then you won't have any problems. Thank you, everyone. My name is Chu Vang. I am a wife um, and I have been farming for many years. I, I have many sons, son-in-laws, daughter, daughter-in-laws, and I only farm 10 acres. And I do understand this session is not just for new farmers, but this is more knowledge for all of us. I'm sure there are people who are more educated and know more than me. But I feel this is very important for all of us to share and learn from about the chemicals that we use every day. And not only will this be a, a safety for the lives of others, but for ourselves. So then we can care, f so that way we show that we care for everyone and ourselves as well. So the chemicals that we use at the farm, it's very important that once we are done using the chemicals, the bottles, we can't just throw it around. And the ones that are still not empty yet, we need to take care of them. It's very important that we put those bottles of chemicals in the right place, in a safe place. One thing is, you cannot store your chemical bottles in your car. And you cannot leave your chemical bottles in the house. And you should never tear off the chemical labels. Because you have to think, it's not just about protecting yourself, but your kids, your whole family and our friends as well. It's very important that you don't take the labels off because, for example, um, there could be anybody that 
could, could access these chemical bottles. So the proper way is you need to put your chemical bottles um, in a bag, in a plastic bag. Um, and that's what, that's what I've just mentioned about um, disposing of your chemical bottles. So, you see, when you, on, on each chemical bottle, there is a proper way how to dispose of it. And it gives you directions on there. So, just so you understand, you cannot just throw these chemical bottles anywhere, in the trash can, anywhere like that. Maybe I that. So we have a handout at the end you can, you can get, and it says, depending on which county you are in, there is a different place to bring a bottle if it still has some chemicals in it, and that information is here. ยาหมกกระปงไอ้จอดชั่วนะนะซอละตอละหมกปอเจ้าโหทุกที่เนี่ยน่ะนี่นี่หมกเค้าเฉยอยู่จอดจอดชั่วจอดบาร์โดยช
Mo Palo Nana. My name is Mo Palo, and I farm in Andover. I farm 10 acres. I'm sorry. <laughs> Two acres. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just started farming, so I'm only farming a, a little bit. But in the future, I plan to farm a lot more. So today I'm presenting. That when we farm and we use the uh, chemicals, we need to uh, wear boots and uh, aprons and uh, shoes and um, socks and long pants and long sleeves. And not only that, but you should also be wearing gloves and masks, aprons and goggles. You see, about gloves, the kind of gloves you should be using are thick gloves. So these are the kind of gloves we use. So this is the kind you should purchase. Do not use these kind. Don't use this. And, and once you're done with the gloves, you should always wash it with water before you put your gloves away. Now I I will be talking about the masks we should be using. This is the incorrect or not the kind of mask we should be using. This is the correct kind you should be using. These masks, you can only use one time. Once you're done with it, you have to throw it away. So these are the four different kinds of things that you should use to protect yourself. So, so this is the apron, and I'm not sure what the word in Hmong for apron is. <laughs> So when you when you wear this, it helps protect you. So that way, when you are spraying the chemicals, it doesn't come back and hit your clothes. You see, in actuality, the correct way to do it is once you are done using uh, your clothes. Once the correct way how to do it is once you have gone to the farm and you use the chemicals to spray, your clothes that you wear on your body actually should be thrown away. But we don't have money to always buy new clothes. Okay. <laughs> So okay, I'm my I'm done with my presentation. Uh, 
Um, but I, I do have one more thing to say. I have a son. He's in the back. He's standing. And if you guys want to buy uh, land to farm, he, the, my son in the back, he will help you with the loans. So thank you, everyone. It's very happy to meet everyone. Oh. Does anybody want to try on? Does anyone want to try on the apron? Okay, I need uh, a person who here saw me. Uh, 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 if anyone wants to come and see and feel any of the materials up here, you're welcome to come up and ask us any questions. We also have a booth out there.